Hey everyone, how are you doing? My name is Bart, and today I want to introduce you to a new frontier for Elixir development. What if you could write client-side code in Elixir that runs directly in the browser? That's hologram in a nutshell. Your Elixir UI code gets turned into JavaScript, runs in the browser, and you never have to switch languages. Just pure Elixir all the way through. I think it's pretty cool, and I'm excited to show you how it works. But before I show you Hologram's architecture and a demo, I need to explain why I created it. For that, we need a quick look at how web development has evolved. In its infancy, it was beautifully simple. A server received a request and returned HTML. That was it. But applications grew. We adapted MVC patterns to organize code, then AJAX for dynamic updates without page reloads. This led to the rise of single page applications, the front and back end split, build systems, TypeScript, each advancement contributing to the snowballing complexity. Fast forward to today, and what started as a simple request response cycle has become, well, let's just say it's a lot more complicated. In response to this complexity, many developers, particularly those in backend oriented communities like Elixir, embraced server rendered frameworks. Tools like Phoenix Live View, Hardwire, Livewire, or HTMX provided a way to build interactive UIs while staying primarily within their preferred ecosystem. But code had been shifted to the client for a reason. And that reason is space and time. While bandwidth has, drawn, has grown tremendously over the years, latency remains constrained by physics, by the, by the speed of light, a fundamental limit set by physics, not technology. A typical client-server round trip takes about 100 to 200 milliseconds, which might not sound like much, but the human eye can perceive significantly smaller UI lag, making server-rendered interactions feel sluggish. Framework creators are well aware of these problems. LiveView, for instance, offers various JS interrupt mechanisms like hooks and JS commands to address specific latency-sensitive interactions. But these workarounds often reintroduce the JavaScript we try to avoid, a leaky abstraction that forces us to understand both worlds anyway and mix imperative and with declarative code. Moving UI state to the server creates additional considerations too. First, Server resources become a factor in UI design. Each component state consumes server memory, while UI updates con consume both CPU and data transfer, sometimes requiring developers to think about the diff payload size too. Secondly, potential race conditions emerge because the DOM is inherently stateful and remains the ultimate source of truth for UI, while its state is being managed remotely on the server. Finally, UI state can be lost during deployments, crashes, or connection interruptions. There's also the question of future-proofing. What happens when your simple app needs to grow into something with rich, highly interactive UI? Does that mean eventually 
circling back to single page applications or finding yourself lost in a maze of complex JavaScript interrupt. So here we are facing the complexity of client heavy approaches and the limitations of server rendered ones. But is there another way? What if we design our ideal web framework architecture from scratch? Not from available technologies, but from the ideal developer and user experience. We've established that physics constraints make server-only rendering problematic for highly interactive UIs. So, let's render on the client and keep the UI state on the client too, right next to where it's needed, close to the rendering layer and the DOM. This approach has another benefit. It uses client resources often sitting idle, reducing server load, infrastructure needs, costs, and CO2 emission. Now, sorry, we still need servers, though, for security-critical operations like authentication and database access, plus server-side rendering for the initial response for SEO and optimal user experience. Now, a key challenge arises. How do we manage code for both client and server rendering without duplication? The answer is isomorphic code, code that can be executed on both client and server sites. But wait, browsers only speak JavaScript and WebAssembly. Does this make our Elixir isomorphic components impossible? Not at all. We can write an Elixir and convert it to a browser-compatible language. This brings us to a crucial choice. Should we transform our Elixir code to JS or to WASM? While WASM excels at CPU-intensive tasks, it has drawbacks for our use case of UI development. It's very low level, resulting in large bundles. It lacks direct DOM access. And there is performance overhead when communicating with JS. JS, on the other hand, offers several advantages for our use case. The transpile code is more readable, resulting in easier debugging. We can use built-in JS functions instead of transpiling everything. And Modern JS engines are incredibly fast. So let's use JavaScript for our transpilation target. Finally, we need to connect our client and server code. WebSockets provide perfect low latency, bidirectional communication without HTTP overhead. And with that, these requirements form our ideal web framework architecture, exactly what Hologram implements. All right, now let's dive into how Hologram applications are structured. Hologram has two fundamental building blocks, components and pages. Components are reusable UI elements bundling logic, presentation, and state. They accept props for configuration. Pages are specialized components. They connect to specific routes, determining when they are displayed. They receive parameters from URLs rather than props. Also, they require layout components for common elements like headers and footers. Think of them as top-level entry points for different sections of, your, of the application. 
The Holo template syntax lets you combine HTML-like structures with Elixir code. For interaction, client-side actions respond to user events, changing state, and triggering re-renders. When server-side processing is needed, actions dispatch asynchronous commands that execute tasks like database queries. These commands can trigger new actions, new client-side actions, creating a perpetual feedback loop. All right, let's jump into the demo. I've built a very simple counter application that showcases the power of hologram. What you're about to see is a fully interactive web app where both the server and client code are written entirely in Elixir. Our counter component is defined as a pure Elixir module. We, we start by defining props that configure, the, that configure our component. We initialize the component state in the init function. For the UI, we use hologram's hollow syntax that combines HTML with Elixir expressions. I should mention that uh, while there is no syntax highlighting plugin for VS Code yet, one is coming soon. The interactive behavior comes from actions that run directly in the browser. And for server-side operations, we use commands. Pages in hologram are Elixir modules that use hologram page behavior. Notice how we specified a route with the route macro and define which layout to use. The layout creates the basic HTML structure and the slot element marks where each page's content gets inserted. In our page template, we are using the CID prop. That's the component ID which uniquely identifies each counter instance so we can manage uh, their state independently. Okay, let me show you this in action. Here we have two counters, Krakow and Warsaw. Watch what happens when I click plus one. It's immediately updates uh, without a server round trip. That's the client-side Elixir code running directly in the browser. Now I'll change, uh, now I'll click the change to random button. This sends a command to the server, which generates a random number and sends it back. Here you can see the code again. In a real application, this could be any server, I'm, I'm talking about the command, command. Uh, this could be any server-side operation like database query or complex business logic. This is just a simple demo, but imagine building much more complex applications. Highly interactive UIs with animations, drag and drop interfaces, or complex forms. Okay, you saw hologram in action, but how does it turn Elixir into browser-ready JavaScript? During compilation, hologram extracts the expanded AST, abstract syntax tree, of your project's modules from their beam files. Then normalizes it, and then transforms it into an IR, intermediate representation, 
designed to bridge Elixir with JavaScript. But the magic is in what happens next. Hologram builds a call graph of your code base and identifies exactly which functions need to run in the browser. Since only actions and templates run on the client, Hologram traces this graph to find all functions reachable from those entry points. This analysis happens per page. Based on this, Hologram takes the relevant portions of your IR and encodes them into targeted JavaScript bundles, containing only the necessary code. The result? Your Elixir runs in the browser with minimal bundle sizes, just what each page actually needs. Looking ahead, Hologram has several exciting directions. First, porting Elixir's process model to JavaScript via web workers. It will bring Elixir elegant concurrency directly to the browser, offering a truly unique value proposition from our Elixir ecosystem. Next, multi-platform development from single code base. Starting with progressive web apps and then expanding to mobile and desktop. The dream? Write once in Elixir and deploy everywhere. This approach becomes increasingly feasible uh, as CPUs improve and JavaScript engines grow more efficient. WebView-based web cross-platform development is now a solid choice for apps that recently needed native code. Web APIs are also advancing rapidly. Check out what PWA, what PWA can do that today to see what's possible, from file system access to hardware integration. Many native app, many, many native app features are now web standards. The future might just be pure Elixir, end-to-end, -end, running anywhere. That's the hologram vision. Before I go, I want to thank a few special people. My partner, Emil Kabuja, for her unconditional love and support and faith in me. My friend, Tomek Robaczewski, for the countless hours discussing front-end technologies and reviewing this presentation, and to my GitHub sponsors who believed in Hologram from early on. I've dedicated five years of my life to this project, working full-time on it for the past two, and this level of commitment isn't sustainable long-term without sponsorship, so I'm actively looking for sponsors who see value in bringing Pure Elixir to the front end. Also, if you think Hologram could benefit your organization, I'm avail available for consulting to help explore its potential for your specific needs. Your next step, install Hologram in your project and experience firsthand how, can, how it can be a game changer for your development workflow. Thank you, that's all I got today.